What's going on? Good evening, folks. Earthmaster here jumping in on this Wednesday evening. June 23rd, 2021 is the date uh, about 8.34 p.m. California time. 5.3, latest quake over here. Some deep movement along with that 5.6 uh, over here around the Indonesia area. Quite a bit of movement down there today. Also along the West Coast region, seeing some uh, activity in Southern California. Uh, a little bit of activity striking around the Los Angeles airport earlier today. Um, LAX down there. Go ahead and kick up the all magnitudes here so we can see some of the aftershock activity uh, that's taken place since this uh, little earthquake. It's not super big, 3.2. It was felt around the region. This thing goes almost right under, if not exactly under, the Los Angeles International Airport. You can see that... Uh, 3.2 right there. There is a fault system that has not been seismically active in quite some time. Um, it looks like the Chinook Ch Chinook fault, Charnock fault, something like that. Uh, I looked up on it a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a a majorly seismic. Hold on a second here. See what's going on with the. Uh, I hope USGS ain't messing with me again. Uh, yeah, I looked up a little bit of information on it, folks, and I want to kind of read off here on some some info that I found. Uh, let's see, the Sharnock Fault is a strike, strike slip fault like the San Andreas and most other faults in Southern California. Uh, let's see here. Do 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 do. The Sharnock Fault is highly inactive with movement less than that of its counterpart, the San Andreas Fault. Of course, there's many, many different fault zones over here uh, and a, a couple dangerous ones that run underneath LA. Uh, but this specific fault structure right here, the Sharnock uh, Fault System, um, it looks like it moves at 0.1 millimeters per year on average. That's very, very minimal. Uh, while the San Andreas Fault moves about two inches per year. Uh, with so little movement per year, it's a debatable question within the geologic community if the Sharnock uh, Fault is active at all. Obviously, it looks like it is. Um, it was discovered well after the LAX uh, airport was constructed. Uh, so far, they say that it's considered to be the least threatening. But... Uh, The airport continues to thrive. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see. According to the city of Los Angeles, the largest earthquake that is believed that can occur along this fault in the worst case scenario is a 6.5. Now, a 6.5 underneath the airport would make that LAX airport inoperable for quite some time and do some damage around the region. A 6.5 is no joke in a highly populated region. So... Um, you know, there's still a lot to learn, folks. We're, you know, we're humans that have been studying geology for what? At least in our modern day, a very short amount of time compared to history here on Earth. So, you know, it's, uh, uh they're, they're stating that it could be a 6.5 on here at the worst case scenario. And that's just a little bitty fault, little bitty fault zone that sits up here. There's much, much, much more dangerous fault systems that uh, run throughout the Los Angeles area. But for this specific area, folks, uh, you know, they're saying 6.5. Uh, 3.2 is the largest quake that has struck so far on this one. A couple aftershocks of 1.5 and a 1.4, not specifically right at that epicenter, kind of to the west and to the south. Variable depths are uh, ranging down to about 14 kilometers. Uh, we did see some further movement over here to the east as well. Uh, also along the North American plate over here, east of the San Andreas Fault near Yucca Valley. Little swarm of activity kicking up there. 3.6 looks to be the largest. I consider that aftershock activity. I shouldn't say swarm, uh, but about, uh, oh, it looks like eight earthquakes or so, including that 3.6 uh, near a fault structure. Johnson, Va Johnson Valley Fault. Um, another significant fault zone out there. I mean, you, you got to think if we're, we're along a major plate boundary such as this, uh, there's going to be many other sub, uh, sub fault systems out here all over the place. 
and there is there's much more to be discovered a little bit of warming activity picking up around the salt and sea area nothing significant uh, but i do expect that to change with all the increase in earthquake activity uh, into southern california so i uh, i'm expecting that to ramp up a little bit uh, towards the north the sleep sleeping section no the slipping creeping section i always think of some weird name to call it instead of the actual name a little bit of movement here along it and also up through the hayward fault structure uh, around the Bay Area as well. Some movement up here northeast or northwest of Tahoe uh, and Truckee area. Looks like a 3.6 being the largest quake uh, in that region. And that's kind of kind of a little bit larger than what we've seen over the past uh, week or so. So we're watching that area pretty closely uh, for some potential movement. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what do we got here? Pacific Northwest, pretty quiet, a little bit of activity throughout the Intermountain West region far as Yellowstone National Park goes I believe we're looking at uh, uh, dwindling down of earthquake activity no more swarming going on at the moment of course that could all change in the blink of an eye uh, checking out international activity um, looks pretty quiet along the Western Pacific here a little bit of movement off the coast of Japan 4.6 and there's that earthquake activity in Indonesia 5.3 in that deep uh, 5.6, 345 kilometers for that uh, 5.6 here, pretty deep. South America seeing some movement out here as well into the Chile region. Uh, nothing significant, uh, just a couple fours. Still watching activity out there as well. Uh, trimmer map, what else? Uh, what else? What else? What else? We got about 12 epicenters in the Northern California, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Other than that, pretty quiet, folks. Um, so yeah, just kind of, you know, taking it easy. I got my nephew here. I'm surprised he's let me do an update video this long, but I'll take every second. <laughs> just, uh, just don't be surprised if you start hearing a little bit of screaming here, you know, the kid coming in and, uh, wanting to do something different. He's kind of watching TV right now, watching some cartoons. Uh, it's pretty hot today. So we, uh, taking breaks from outside, staying inside. I prefer to be outside, but you know what? Not when it's 92 uh, to 110 degrees, you know. We're looking at some significant heat coming up really soon uh, for this part of California again. Check out the KB indexes over here. Very, very calm. Um, low, very low chances of any type of geomagnetic uh, storming taking place. Um, so, yeah, just pretty quiet, folks. No coronal holes. Sunspots over here. Uh, we'll have to see what it looks like as it comes this way. But uh, overall, solar activity is very, very low. All right, guys, have a good night. Uh, stay safe out there. Just kind of, you know, be prepared. And uh, hope everyone has a good night. Once again, look, uh, I mentioned this earlier on the live stream. Friday, I'm going to be putting out an update video. Well, actually, it's going to be a 50K subscriber uh, contest giveaway video. It's going to include details on what you need to do to enter into this drawing that I'm doing approximately two weeks uh, from this Friday, from when I put out the, uh, the details of the video. I'll be doing a drawing live on air two weeks from this Friday, but I'll go into more details when I put out this video this Friday on what to do, how to enter it, and uh, all that good stuff, and then details of what I've what I'm giving away. So it's not a trip to Maui. It's not a trip to the Bahamas. I wish I could do that myself, but that's not happening at the moment. So uh, it's just something kind of cool. Um, and you'll see. We'll, we'll post it out Friday. So have a good night, folks. We'll chat you a little bit later. Stay safe out there. <laughs>